Thank you very much. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what that lectern is for, but I'll use this one like everybody else. <laughs> well, needless to say, I'm grateful to Research America uh, for this dis distinguished honor and for including me in such illustrious company. And I won't tell you about my favorite sandwich. Not tonight, after that. <laughs> uh, and I'm especially grateful to Raymond and Beverly Sackler for their generosity in sponsoring this award. Uh, I'm very pleased to be honored in their name. Uh, I also want to recognize uh, Mark Kirshner and Harold Varmus, both of whom influenced me uh, in the uh, realm of advocacy. Uh, they were colleagues and co-conspirators. Uh, Harold's service in particular as director of the National Institutes of Health both uh, inspired and motivated me. Uh, as you heard, he's now uh, also come back to town to run the National Cancer Institute, and I have concluded <clears throat> that he has a very serious case of Potomac fever. <laughs> now, I'm embarrassed to say this, but it seems to me that I am being honored simply because I did what I felt obliged to do as a scientist. First, educate. Years ago, when I was still far down the academic ladder at uh, uh, UCSF, I toured California on behalf of the American Cancer Society, lecturing to general audiences uh, at far-flung places such as Eureka, Bakersfield, Fresno, and heaven forfend, Los Angeles. <laughs> the most revealing part of that experience was how eager those, audience, those audiences were uh, not only to find hope in what I said, but to understand, to truly understand what we were learning about cancer. That's where their questions all went. There was a lesson in this for me as a young scientist. At the heart of advocacy is education. I have found this to be true of any patron uh, whether philanthropist or public official, although with all due respect, I have, to, I have to say that I have generally found public officials the more difficult of the two to educate. I suspect that they have their reasons for that. Second, practice citizenship. American scientists are blessed with a representative government. We are entitled, and I feel obliged, to make the case for science with our lawmakers. lawmakers and to do it in ways that go beyond the generic claim of societal good. It is not sufficient, nor should it be, to simply argue that medical research is transparently important. We need to explain ourselves and what we do. Now, you may demean that as lobbying, if you like, but politics is the way of the world in a representative government, and it provides access for the activist scientist. And, of course, that has been Research America's clarion call since its inception. I'm in the twilight of my career. If I had to do it over again, I would have spent more time on the Hill in Washington, more time in Sacramento, more time in lawmakers' local offices, more time writing op-ed articles, more time talking to general audiences, more time in the public square. I found all of that gratifying, stimulating, perhaps even productive on occasion. But I never thought that it was anything more than my responsibility. Thank you very much.